Hello and welcome to a Q&A for Colorado Dragon Boat Film Festival. It is my honor to be uh, questioning today uh, two of the directors of the um, short film series, hashtag Asian M COVID stories. We have Sarita and Valerie with me. Um, and my name is Sarah Moore. I am the executive director for the overall nonprofit Colorado Dragon Boat. Um, welcome ladies. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. I would uh, love to start us off um, just by having you guys go ahead and just introduce yourself and let us know um, how you're a part of this series. Um, Sarita, would you like to go first? Sure. Hi, everyone. I'm Sarita Karana. I'm based in Brooklyn, New York. Um, I've been a member of ADOC since its inception in 2016, and my short in the film uh, series is called Home Delivered. Thank you. Valerie? Um, so I'm in San Francisco, and my short film, Sewing in the Time of Coronavirus, was the pilot film for this series. So, And it came out be about because um, Grace Lee, who's one of the founders of ADOC, um, found out that I was looking for film festival lanyards to make into face masks at the very beginning of the COVID crisis. So she sent me this giant bag of <laughs> film festival lanyards. And, um, and then she said, could you make a little film about like your process? And so I did. Wonderful. That is great. And this series has, I think, I believe it's uh, 17 short films. And uh, your uh, two series are absolutely amazing, your two short films. Um, I would love to hear more about how you got um, kind of introduced into the series. I know that you've been talking about ADOCs. I would love to hear maybe your connection with them. Um, Valerie, would you like to go? Sure. Um, ADOC is the Asian American Documentary Network. And it's a like a, a nationwide group of Asian American documentary filmmakers that have you know, little pods around the country. So we, when we used to be able to meet in person, we would have, you know, meetups and events and so forth at, at film festivals. And in between, we'd just go out and have drinks and stuff. And <laughs> so it's really like a support network because there's a lot of documentary filmmakers that are Asian Americans. So we wanted to kind of hook everybody up. And then after, um, the pandemic started, that's when Grace and Leo Chang, who's the other founder of the of ADOC, decided to put this series together, which was really great because it was a way to um, get us all to kind of document where we were in this crazy moment in history that we're all living through. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's like a really great thing to have this record of that time. Yes, definitely. Yeah. <clears throat> Sarita? Yeah, just to add to what Valerie's saying, um, you know, there's so much Asian American and Asian like anti-racism at the time. And so, you know, there was this whole backlash with the virus being like, an, you know, a Chinese virus, like incredible anti-Asian racism. And so the series, you know, was really thought of as a way to combat that anti-Asian racism, but also to document some of the experiences of Asian American communities at the time, like real experiences, you know, that were happening and what was happening with the pandemic in these communities. So um, there was a call put out to filmmakers, Asian American filmmakers, and then ADOC commissioned the 17 or so films that are in the series, as well as uh, several written pieces, like photo essay pieces. Um, so that's kind of how it launched in yeah, I think the Valerie Short uh, launched the series in May, I believe. March. Was it March? Oh, wait, no. Yeah, April, May ish. Yeah, I, I think can't the remember. call was in. Yeah, April, I think it was in May. And You're yeah. right, right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I made mine earlier, though. That's why I'm kind of getting confused. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's kind of hard to figure out what the timeline is in general of all 2020 um, with the pandemic happening. And I think it's such an amazing um, opportunity for everybody to see, like you said, the stories from Asian Americans throughout the country, which is really, really amazing. Um, and, and you're right, there unfortunately has been too much anti-Asian um, sentiment 
going on nationwide, worldwide, um, and it's still very prevalent today. And that's actually something that um, the Colorado Dragon Boat Film Festival is working to combat um, through education and just promotion of the amazing contributions and accomplishments of all of the AAPI communities out there. And um, thank you so much for letting us highlight uh, your talents and contributions to the community and to the world as a whole. Um, because I think um, just viewing things through film and cinema just really helps people understand um, experiences it's, it's storytelling and, and really learning what each experience um, kind of feels like and, and is like. Um, so thank you so much for that. Um, and I would love to, um, Sarita, go into um, a little bit of details about your um, short film, um, uh, Home Delivered. I absolutely love that. Thank you so much for A, doing that, um, the film. Can you tell us a little bit more about the motivation behind it? What inspired you? Thank you. Yeah. Um, so I think, you know, with seniors being one of the most vulnerable populations, you know, during COVID, um, and then in New York, uh, New York at the time, you know, this is earlier on in the pandemic, like April, March, April, May became the epicenter of the pandemic. And especially in Queens where, uh, you know, there was, we were seeing like in neighborhoods like Jackson Heights and Elmhurst and Corona, just incredible numbers of cases. Um, and so those kind of came together for me. And I was already in conversation with a local organization that served South Asian seniors in Queens and just kind of checking in with them about uh, you know, what was happening and seeing, you know, their programs were shut down, people were you know, quarantining and just this incredible isolation uh, and fear that seniors were feeling at this time and really feeling disconnected. And so, you know, with the COVID, ADOC's COVID series, I really wanted to kind of capture, um, you know, what was happening both with the seniors, but also what was happening with community efforts to kind of address some of the things that were, you know, and these, this was like a, a community organization that was providing an organized like home meal delivery for these seniors, which ended up being like such a critical support, you know, just even sort of checking in on them and daily contact and you know, unlike so many of us who might want to even just go outside for a walk, like seniors couldn't even go do that or pick up some food. And there was a whole cultural element around, you know, food being uh, a, a space of comfort and kind of really wanting to bring all of that together. And for me, it was just really being able to tell that story and highlight the experiences of, of some of these seniors during this moment. Yeah, thank you so much. I think one of uh, my my favorite points of the of the film was food is comfort, and it really is. <laughs> As far, at least for me, I'm I'm definitely a foodie. I love I love all food, um, but I think like just seeing that perspective of seniors, especially in New York, like you said, on the epicenter, it's something that we don't think about every day. And um, the the senior living home for um, the um, uh, for the Indian community was shut down, and yeah, that takes away so many um, things for individuals to be doing to keep them happy and have passion in their life. So this was such an amazing um, film to watch and just to see what the community is coming together to do for, for our seniors. So thank you so much for doing that. And then Valerie, making masks, sewing in the time of coronavirus. <sighs> Would you mind yeah, giving a little bit of detail on that? Sure. Um, like we said, I said in the movie, you know, at the beginning of the COVID situation in the U.S., there was no PPE for anybody. And we were really worried, especially about medical workers who were, you know, putting their lives at risk because the Trump administration had messed up so badly about uh, protecting people. And so um, it was very ad hoc. Um, Christina Wong, the performance artist, just posted on Facebook. She made a Facebook page just to get support for people who wanted to help sew face masks, especially finding supplies. Like we couldn't find any elastic for a long time. So people were like cutting up bed sheets and stuff, you know? So now it's better. <laughs> but back then it was pretty, um, pretty improvisational, let's say that. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's why I started to use the film festival lanyards because we couldn't find any ways to make ties. 
um, now things have got a little better, but now the group is huge. There's like 800 people in there across the country. We make all these face masks. We also, people have started knitting hats and, you know, we sent a bunch of coats to Navajo, to um, Standing Rock, the reservation in Standing Rock, because there are people that are really cold there, right? <laughs> um, so it's turned into this really great thing. Um, that's not only just about sewing face masks, but other forms of taking care of people and supporting uh, vulnerable communities. Yeah. Yeah, I think I thought that was so um, unique to use the uh, film festival lanyards <laughs> as um, in place of elastic. Because you're right, when um, uh, coronavirus first uh, started and we needed to start wearing masks, I also tried making a few and I didn't have any elastic and you couldn't right. find it anywhere. Um, and that's so creative to use what you have. And I absolutely love um, the different film festival lanyards. So if you need any more, yeah. I have some uh, Colorado Dragon <laughs> Boat film festival lanyards oh I can God. send you. <laughs> I don't do that anymore. I feel like, you know, but so many people had lanyards, like people would send me like dozens of lanyards in these bags. It was just like, oh my God, obviously we were all just hoarding these things in our houses. <laughs> So it's good to repurpose them for my own life because they're not in my house anymore, right? So. Mm -hmm. Yes, I love it. Yeah, <laughs> um, that is great. And um, do you, by chance, know about how many masks you guys made um, throughout that process? Oh my god, I want to say like a hundred thousand. There's like literally some people who have made like, uh, you know, like ten thousand masks. Not me. I've made only like maybe less than seven hundred masks. But there are people who like make like two hundred masks a week. They're just like monsters. <laughs> So, but, you know, also just because the group is so big, you know, so even if you've only made like a hundred or something, that's still going to add up, right? Mm -hmm. No, that is absolutely amazing. And it's just yeah. so amazing to think that um, back before 2020, we didn't wear masks. And now when I'm not wearing one, I'm like, oh, God, what's going on? <laughs> like, yeah. oh, I'm alone in my house. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think we were hoping to normalize it more and also just sending out kind of prettier masks, right? Because <laughs> if you don't want to wear like one of those ugly surgical masks, maybe you'll wear like a nice um, homemade mask. And now, of course, you have a double mask, right? So we, the thing is you put the ugly ones underneath and then you put the nice ones on top. <laughs> so it's a fashion statement. <laughs> Definitely. I love it. <laughs> uh, very true. And I actually, I, I do yeah. hope at least um, within the future, we're, we're still going to make wearing masks um, more more normal. So if you hopefully once coronavirus is gone, um, but even if you're feeling like you have a cold or something, you can still feel like you have the opportunity to wear a mask to protect others, um, which I yeah. think is really, really awesome. And it's definitely something that's um, been implemented in Asia quite a bit. Um, and I yeah, think it it's be like a fashion thing in Asia. Yeah, it's yeah, totally definitely. Like, you are you know, creating people wear fashion. Them when they're not sick. Like, you know, <laughs> if you like have, if you're a, a guy and you just haven't shaved that day, it's like, yeah, put on that mask. You know, mm -hmm. I love but it. I do want to also say something about Asian American documentaries. So this is kind of like a, a continuation of this long history of Asian American filmmakers making social issue documentaries and using film as like a, a, a way to, you know, a tool of activism to kind of you know, get people to uh, think about how they can work to make the world a better place, right? And also giving Asian Americans voices because like Sarita said, you know, there's a lot of anti-Asian violence now, still a lot happening. Um, it's just really terrible. So to, to empower Asian Americans to be able to speak out through filmmaking is really important. Yeah, mm -hmm. so that's what ADOC is about too. I absolutely love that. And actually, I um, wanted to mention our theme for this year's uh, festival is representation um, because, yeah, we just we need to represent um, our communities in all aspects of life. And especially in the film industry, there are hundreds, millions of us out there who are working on film and contributing to the community in such a, a strong way. Um, and I, I love that what ADOC is doing and I hope that Colorado Dragon Boat Film Festival can continue on that movement. Um, Sarita, do you have anything you'd like to add regarding um, just the importance of Asian Americans in film and being represented? Yeah, I mean, I think one of the things, you know, I was just thinking about the series, like it really brought together um, you know, emerging filmmakers, more established filmmakers. There was a really also a multi-generational approach to ADOC working with filmmakers. Um, you know, as series producers, you know, we would, each filmmaker would get notes from uh, some of the ADOC, uh, you know, folks who were on the series team. And it was just an incredible, you know, working relationship. And then to have each individual 
film be part of a series where the films I feel like really did speak to each other you know and you're hearing about you know all these front Asian American frontline you know essential workers you're hearing about like some of the COVID deaths that are happening in our communities or you know the struggle of some uh, families opening their restaurant or um, it was just like an incredible way from all around the country where these stories were being told and really like giving a larger sense about the Asian American experience during the pandemic, you know, and I think that's that's such a unique perspective, like nobody else is really putting that perspective out there. So when you're talking about mm -hmm. visibility and representation, like this, this was one of the few places that were really pulling those stories together and you're not seeing these necessarily on you know, your local television station or so, you know, it's important that series like this happen and the work happens and um, the stories have visibility. And, you know, one of the funny things too was everyone was really, all the filmmakers were really a bit frustrated that each film could only be two minutes, you know, like editing your footage down to two minutes. But, you know, on the other end, it was really impactful because it could get out on social media really quickly and be, you know, put out on Twitter or Instagram or whatever. And so, you know, that was a way for it to reach really a lot of people. So, um, you know, a lot of great thinking just went into putting the series together and, you know, sort of documenting these experiences. Yes, and it is so important, and I, I love that it is um, also on YouTube. So for people who are watching who would like to watch it again, um, go ahead and go to our webpage, um, and we have links to all of the series, including the written and photo um, essays that are also a part of the series, and it's absolutely amazing. I feel like I watch it every week just to... Some of them are so funny. Some of them like just really elicit um, feelings that I think need to be felt. Absolutely amazing. So thank you so much. And I would love to uh, talk to you all day, um, but unfortunately we have some limited time, um, but I would love to hear what you guys are up to um, right now. And if you have any other films that you're working on um, and if people are interested, how to get in contact with you. Um, Valerie, would you like to go? Yeah, you know, I'm trying to make a feature film about the anti-sewing squad, which is a, the topic of the short, right? So right now it's in development and trying to raise funds, hopefully trying not to do too much crowdfunding, but I'm sure that'll be part of the future. Um, the way to reach me, I'm um, on Twitter, V-S-O-E. Um, Instagram is Valerie So. Facebook is also Valerie So. Wonderful. Thank you. Sarita, do you have anything going on? Yeah, I'm also continuing my work uh, looking at seniors and aging in the South Asian community and making a feature. Um, just thinking through, yeah, like what does it mean for immigrant seniors, you know, specifically in the South Asian community to get older hair and new kind of ideas about home and belonging. So I'm in development, you know, early in that film too. Uh, you can reach me on Instagram. Um, I'm on Instagram. You could just look me up, Sarita Karana. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Great. Well, thank you so much for continuing your work on these um, on the short film into a, a feature film because these are very necessary stories to hear. Um, and we would love to um, showcase them next year at our film festival if you guys are, are done and willing to do that. Um, and hopefully by then we will have a in-person film festival again. And we would love yeah. to invite um, both of you out to come and just have fun at the um, film festival and um, meet everybody in the community. But thank you so great. much. Um, thank you yeah, so much again. I, it was oh, sorry, so fun. I was able to bring Love Boat Taiwan last year, and it was so fun to. That was the last one of the last festivals I went to about a year oh, ago. Oh wow! And after we that, are, well, we're honored. Yeah, <laughs> we're sad that it was no one of the last ones, but we're honored yeah, to have been. So it's nice. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for inviting our series. Yeah. Thank you so much for all the work that you um, ladies are doing in the community and for Asian American filmmakers and Asian Americans all around um, the world. Thank you so much. And Thanks, we will uh, see you soon.